Today on Bridge City News, Liberal MP Celine Caesar Chavon accuses Prime Minister Trudeau of hostile behavior toward her after she told him she would not be running in the next election. We will tell you about two local home builders who put their skills to work in El Salvador to help the less fortunate. And a 116-year-old Japanese woman is being honored as the world's oldest living person by Guinness World Records. Good afternoon, I'm Paul Arthur with the weekend edition of Bridge City News. Two Lethbridge home building companies put their skills to a good cause recently, building 20 homes for the needy in El Salvador. Garrett Bazoyan of Bazoyan Contracting joined with Ashcroft Homes for their fourth consecutive year to assist the Shelter Canada organization. The first day that we get there, we will actually spend the morning and meet all the families, the local families that we will be building for. Um, so we kind of get to know who we are going to be working for and building for. Um, those same families work with us all week as we build these homes. It's a privilege and a blessing to be able to give back and then to actually build into these people's lives and to even have each of us have a different experience coming back as well, just from how we respond to those in need and the poverty and how um, those people are actually pretty content overall and they seem to be happy people for the most part and then so you kind of we see what we have and what they have and we kind of like sometimes have to scratch our heads and kind of like wow. Bazoyan says the nearly $70,000 raised came from local Southern Alberta partners. It has been about six weeks since we have begun to approach normal temperatures in southern Alberta and snow is finally starting to melt. The city of Lethbridge has now completed snow removal on our main roadways. Last winter the snow removal budget was about two million dollars over budget but so far this year costs have dropped by about half. However with March being the month with the highest snowfall amounts that could yet change. And while we're on the topic of snow, it's not clear when an elderly man became snowbound in his Ottawa home, but police say he was housebound for weeks on end as a result of the city's excessively snowy winter. A concerned neighbor called police to check on him. Officers helped dig him out and he appeared to be okay. The man who was in his 70s did have heat and electricity and access to a phone, but decided he would ration his food and wait for spring rather than call for help. Rural communities in Alberta say they are owed more than $81 million in unpaid taxes from oil and gas companies. The Rural Municipalities of Alberta says the number is based on a survey done involving most of its 69 members. Al Kamir, president of the organization, says many of the companies involved have declared bankruptcy in recent years. And municipalities are low on the list of beneficiaries from asset sales. They have asked the Alberta Energy Regulator to ensure that there are no outstanding municipal property taxes owed before energy licenses are transferred. Chiefs with Treaty 8 First Nations in northern Alberta want the province to crack down on herbicide spraying. They want no spraying on forestry cut blocks, power pole locations and transmission line corridors. The chiefs say herbicides are hurting wildlife and fresh water. Treaty 8 says hunters and trappers are reporting reduced wildlife in the surrounding areas where spraying is being done. Grand Chief Arthur Noski says herbicide spraying directly affects their treaty right to trap and gather food. A Calgary police officer who has been on stress leave for nearly two years is suing the city and the police force for sexual harassment and intimidation. Kimberly Prodniuk's statement of claim includes allegations of sexually explicit comments made by other police while on duty and during a training course. The allegations, which also include a claim of derogatory comments made by the Calgary Police Association, have not been proven in court. Her lawsuit is seeking an undisclosed financial amount for damages. The Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations wants the province to accept Ottawa's new child welfare bill. Chief Bobby Cameron says it hopes the Saskatchewan government will not oppose or reject the federal legislation. According to Statistics Canada, Indigenous children make up 25% of the child population in Saskatchewan, yet account for 85% of children in care. 
A reminder to set your clocks ahead one hour tonight as daylight savings time starts again. The time change officially happens Sunday morning at 2 a.m. Although not all of Canada observes daylight savings time, most notably the province of Saskatchewan. Meanwhile, B.C. Premier John Horgan says he is checking with America's West Coast states about possibly moving to a unified time zone. Horgan says he wants to explore the possibility of California, Washington, Oregon and B.C. being on the same time all year long. B.C. can switch to a single time zone without federal approval, but the states require an act of Congress to do so. Police in a community southwest of Montreal say a nearly nine-hour standoff involving hostages ended peacefully with a suspect surrendering. The drama kicked off just before 5 p.m. yesterday after a man in his 50s, armed with an unspecified weapon, stormed into a local bank branch. Four employees were held hostage until being released unharmed around 10 p.m. The suspect gave himself up a few hours later and was taken to a hospital for evaluation before being questioned by investigators. The gunman who killed six worshippers in a Quebec City mosque is appealing his sentence of life in prison with no possibility of parole for 40 years. Alexander Bissonnette's lawyers say he should be given a sentence of 25 years before being eligible for parole. In their motion, the lawyers claim the 40-year sentence is cruel and unusual, even though it's well below the 150 years the Crown asked for. Canada's two largest rail companies are appealing an order from the feds requiring railways to immediately use handbrakes on all trains stopped on mountain slopes. Transport Minister Mark Garneau's order follows a deadly derailment in the Rocky Mountains last month that killed three Canadian Pacific Railway employees. Both CP Rail and Canadian National Railway say there are alternative solutions that will more adequately address safety concerns. Liberal MP Celine Caesar Chavon told the Globe and Mail that Prime Minister Trudeau was angry when she told him on February 12th of her plans to announce she was not running in the October federal election. She alleges he yelled at her in that conversation and that she shouted back at him and says the Prime Minister later apologized. An official with the Prime Minister's office says Trudeau had emotional conversations with Caesar Chavon, but denies her claims that the encounters were hostile. Trudeau says he is rethinking some of the processes of how his office supports MPs and is getting outside advice on how to better deal with internal disagreements. The SNC-Lavalin controversy is heading into another weekend with the leader of the opposition still calling for the Prime Minister's resignation. Despite Conservative leader Andrew Scheer believing that Justin Trudeau has lost the moral authority to govern, he says he will not be introducing a motion of non-confidence. That's not the direction we're going in at this point in time. We're still trying to use the parliamentary tools at our, at our disposal to get to the bottom of this scandal and to try to break through the cover-up that Justin Trudeau is engaged in. It is not up to the Prime Minister of Canada to intervene in a criminal court case and start deciding what prosecutors do and do not offer to companies facing corruption and bribery charges. That is the decision of an independent director of public prosecutions. The entire reason why the previous Conservative government set up that office in that way was to remove politics from these types of considerations. And we don't interfere. We shouldn't interfere. And what Justin Trudeau stands accused of is, is overstepping that line for political purposes. That is a very dark and dangerous path that we do not want to go down as a country. Meantime, SNC-Lavalin lost a court bid yesterday to overturn the public prosecutor's refusal to negotiate an agreement that would see the company avoid a criminal trial. Hours after the Chinese government said it would take all necessary measures to defend Chinese companies and citizens abroad, Foreign Affairs Minister Christia Freeland welcomed a declaration of bipartisan political support from the U.S., Ottawa and Beijing have been at odds since the December arrest of a Chinese tech executive in Vancouver at the request of the U.S. The U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee introduced a measure this week that commends Canada for arresting Huawei's chief financial officer, Meng Wanzhou. The American measure also expresses concern over the Chinese detention of Canadians Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig and calls for their release. U.S. President Donald Trump's new budget plan seeks billions of dollars more for a border wall and for a new Defense Department space agency. For the first time, Trump plans to stick with the strict spending caps imposed years ago, even though lawmakers have largely avoided them with new budget deals. Trump will seek $750 billion for defense, a boost for the military, while cutting non-defense discretionary spending by 5% below the cap. 
Trump visited Alabama yesterday after the area was devastated last weekend with a deadly tornado that killed 23 people, including some children. The tornado was packing winds of 274 kilometers per hour. Mr. President, what did you see from the air? Well, I saw this. It's hard to believe, actually. And I guess uh, the fact that we went very early helped, helped a lot of people. But we saw things that you wouldn't believe. Here it is. We saw the same thing. These are incredible people. We just met some of the survivors and family members. And what they've been through is incredible. One woman lost 10 people in her family. And an incredible woman. And she, I said, how, how did it go? She said, I lost 10, 10 people. And uh, a couple of others lost two and three. It's, I've never seen anything like it. I just want to thank you on behalf of the First Lady and myself. I want to thank you for the job you do. You're incredible people. We couldn't get here fast enough. I want to come the day it happened, but I spoke with the governor. And, uh, she said, just give us a little more time. We need a little more time. And already the job is uh, really great, the job you've done. So thank you very much. Uh, FEMA's uh, laying it out. They're all here. They're all hard. New U.S. Federal Aviation Administration rules will allow some cities to try new emergency medical services that would deliver defibrillators by drone. Reno, Nevada is one of 10 cities experimenting to allow with Flirty, a company developing using drones to send automated external defibrillators to treat heart attack victims. The FAA plans to conduct some of the first tests with drones flying over urban areas in Reno next month. India is demanding that Pakistan take concrete steps against terrorists operating from its territory, while at the same time returning its top diplomat to Pakistan's capital amid easing tensions between the nuclear rivals. Pakistan also announced this week that its high commissioner to India was returning to New Delhi. A spokesman for India's external affairs ministry said a reported Pakistani crackdown this week on seminaries, mosques and hospitals belonging to outlawed groups and the arrest of dozens of people was not sufficient. A 116-year-old Japanese woman is being honored as the world's oldest living person by Guinness World Records. Kane Tanaka was officially recognized in a ceremony today with her family and local dignitaries present to help her celebrate. Tanaka was born January 2, 1903, the seventh among eight children. She is usually up by 6 a.m. and enjoys studying mathematics. She is only six years shy of the record for oldest person ever, which is held by Frances Jeanne Calment who reached the age of 122. Recapping one of our top news stories, Liberal MP Celine Caesar Chavon has accused Prime Minister Trudeau of hostile behavior toward her after she told him she would not be running in the next election. Trudeau has denied the allegations. And a look at weekend weather, clear skies overnight with a low of minus 14 with a wind chill of minus 20. Then sunshine for tomorrow with a high of zero. That's still not up to the average high for this time of year, which is plus five, but we should be close to that on Monday. The impact of drug and alcohol addiction can be staggering. Hal Roberts discusses this with Al Nelson, who finally overcame his addiction, which saw him spend $20,000 on drugs in just six days. This powerful story of addiction and recovery is coming right up. But first, here's a look at what's happening in and around your community. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. It's the 15th annual Woods Homes Children's Benefit Gala taking place Saturday, March 30th at 6 p.m. at the Coast Hotel Lethbridge. This special night is in support of the emergency youth shelter, FICOR. This year's gala includes a delicious dinner, silent and live auctions, and live entertainment by the Chevelles. For tickets and sponsorship opportunities, contact Colleen Campbell by calling 403-317-1777 or visit woodshomes.ca. Lethbridge Legal Guidance is a nonprofit society offering free legal advice to low-income Southern Albertans. It holds clinics on Tuesdays from 5 to 7 p.m. by appointment only. Some of the areas the society assists in include family, criminal, traffic, immigration, EI, and other issues. For more information, call 403-380-6338 or email Lethbridge Legal Guidance at telus.net. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar.